Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a ratcheting noisemaker. Well, it's a fun little project and it's another great way to utilize some scrap. Um, if you've got friends that have young kids, it's uh, kind of fun to give their kids the noisemakers and then send them home. But that's another story. Anyway, what we're going to need here to start with this is, like I said, some scrap material. And uh, we're going to need some one inch diameter dowel. Not a long piece, only about five inches. But I really don't have any, so I'm going to chuck up a scrap piece of maple and I'm going to spin a one inch dowel on the lathe. With our one inch dowel turned, uh, look at that, one inch maple dowel, try getting that one looking like that from the big box stores. Anyway, enough tooting my own horn, um, we're going to take this over now and cut this down to its length of five inches. We have the dowel cut down to five inches in length and now what we need to do is we need to drill a 7 16 diameter hole right down through the center of this dowel. So I'm going to head over to the drill press and uh, show you guys how you can go about doing this. Well we're over here at the drill press and we've got a piece of poplar uh, against the fence of our drill press. It doesn't have to be poplar, it can be any old scrap that you have, uh, even a piece of 2x4. But we're going to clamp this to the fence just to make sure that it's not going to move around on us and that's kind of imperative. So the fence is locked down, the board is in place and we've got a one inch bit in the drill press and what we're going to do is we're going to drill down into this piece of poplar. It doesn't have to be all the way through but eventually our dowel is going to sit in that one inch hole so we want to have it deep enough that it's going to support the dowel. Once you get your hole drilled, everything is still clamped in place nice and tight. You want to remove this one inch bit. Now, I'm sure this goes without saying, but be careful here because this bit can still be quite hot. And without moving any of your setup here, whether it be this block or whether it be your table or your fence or whatever, leave it exactly the same and then install your 7 16 of an inch drill bit in your chuck. So now that you've got your drill bit in place, um, because the centers line up for both the center of the one inch hole that you drilled and the center of your chuck, it only goes to reason that the center of your 7 16 drill bit will be lined up as well. And when you slide your dowel into that one inch hole, you should have no problems drilling um, this 7 16 inch hole in the one inch dowel. Now I have a clamp on here just to assist me in case it should spin and uh, don't try to hold it with your hands guys uh, that's not a good thing. But you want to drill this hole down into this dowel two and a quarter inches deep. So I've marked that depth on my uh, drill bit here with some blue painters tape. So go ahead and drill that hole in the center of your dowel. So we have our 7 16 hole drilled in the middle of our 1 inch diameter dowel and like I said it's 2 and a quarter inches deep. What we're going to need now for the axle of this noisemaker will be a 7 16 diameter dowel that's going to be cut to a length of 5 inches. So now that you've got your 7 16 dowel cut down to 5 inches, you want to measure down from one end by one and five eighths. And in the center of the dowel, 
you want to drill a 3 16 through hole right through this axle. And you may want to cut yourself a little jig to cradle this to keep it so that it's centered. And uh, you can do that very easily by just cutting a V-notch out of a scrap piece of board and then sitting this in the V-notch in order to hold it steady while you're drilling it. So mark in one and five eighths and drill a 3 16 diameter through hole right through this dowel. So here we have a scrap of plywood and you can see here that I've cut a V-notch in this here and that's going to um, help to hold the dowel that we're going to be trying to drill. And what you want to do here is in order to line up the fence on your drill press, and I don't know how many times I got to say it, if you don't have a fence on your drill press, I mean, it goes a long way to improving the quality of your projects and making certain tasks a heck of a lot easier. But what you want to do here is you want to line up your drill bit with the center of that V-notch, and once you get that lined up, tighten down your fence. And as far as drilling the hole goes in the dowel, line up your dowel with the end of your board. Make sure that it's lined up with your, um, with your drill bit, left and right here. As I'm adjusting, you can see me adjusting it here. And we're going to line it up so that it's lined up with the center of the drill bit. And once we get that done, slide a stop block over. This is the same one that we use to uh, drill our one inch dowel and just clamp it down. Now this is just a matter of sliding your dowel in, everything's lined up, and go ahead and drill that 3 16 diameter hole. The next thing you want to do is mark 3 eighths of an inch down from the end of the handle that you drilled the 7 16 inch hole in. And we're going to be putting a 3 16 through hole in the handle at this point. But before you do, you want to slide the axle in and you want to only slide it in a certain amount. So we've taken our 7 16 inch dowel and on the opposite end that you measured for this hole, We've measured in two and an eighth. And what we're going to do is we're going to insert this dowel into our handle up to that two and one eighth mark. And once you get it lined up now, what you're going to need to do is place it in your drill press here. You, can, you still have the fence set up. Remember the same trick there where the centers line up. And you just have to line it up with your three eighths mark just like that, hold it firmly, and then go ahead and drill the hole all the way through, right through your handle and right through your uh, axle, which is on the inside there that you just slid in. So go ahead and drill that through hole. So here we have a scrap of maple. It's three quarters of an inch thick. Um, the handle that you've been working on up until now, you can put that aside. We're, we're going to move on to other pieces for now, and we're going to come back to that handle. But uh, to start with, what we're going to need to do is, in this um, piece of maple, we want to mark a crosshairs just to give us something to work with, because we're going to start working on the ratcheting gear of this noisemaker. So we now have the crosshairs there and now we need to get ourselves a compass. So we have our compass set up and we need to draw on our piece of maple here um, a line or a circle that is two inches in diameter. So that is our circle and at this point in time now we need to make some intersecting lines and you'll understand a little more in just a minute. But what we're going to do is measure between where our crosshair lines meet with the outer edge of this circle. We're going to make a measurement from intersecting point to intersecting point and mark the center. 
Then we're going to do the same on the opposite side and mark the center and draw a line right through. That's the difficult way. The other way to do it is to get a combination square and just draw a 45 degree line from this side right through the center point and this side right through the center point. Our next step in this process, now that we have this marked out, we should have eight intersecting points around the outside of the circle. We're going to center punch each one of those eight points and we're going to drill a through 5 8 diameter hole. Once you have all your 5 8 diameter holes drilled, you should have something that looks like this. The next thing you want to do is from this center mark along one of your horizontal axis, you want to mark a, a, a line 5 16 of an inch out from the center and another one same on the other side. Then you want to drill a 3 16 diameter hole that's 3 16 of an inch deep at this point and this point. And this center hole is going to be a 7 16 diameter through hole. So go ahead and drill those. 3 16 3 16 deep, 3 16 3 16 deep, and a 7 16 through hole for the center. So at this point in time now, we've got all of our holes drilled, and we're going to take this over to the scroll saw, and we're going to cut around the um, outer diameter lines from our original two inch circle and that will provide us with our ratcheting cog for this noisemaker. And here is our cog. The one last step to do to complete this other than giving it a good sanding is these two three sixteenths of an inch holes that we drilled here that's going to be for a locking peg to prevent this from spinning on the axle. So we need to get in here with a small chisel and just square off those holes so that this is actually a slot now right across. So go ahead and uh, do that and uh, that would be the final step in completing this, this noisemaker gear. And there you can see the slot that I've straightened out uh, that will house the locking pin. So with that now being done, give your gear a good sanding and uh, then, you know what, we'll carry on from there. Okay, you've got the handle cut, you've got the axle cut, you've got the holes drilled, you've got your cog or your ratcheting section done, and now you need to move on to making the pieces for the body. So for starters, you're going to need two pieces that are going to be three quarters of an inch thick by one inch wide by ten inches long. You're going to need two of those. Well, now that you've got your two pieces cut that are three quarters thick by one inch by ten inches, um, now you need to cut two more pieces and they're going to be 11 30 seconds by 25 30 seconds and you're going to cut them three and a half inches long. And the final piece that you're going to need to cut is going to be out of one sixteenth inch thick stock and it will be three quarters of an inch wide and seven and three quarter inches long. So here we have our end pieces. This is the, uh, or our arms, this is the one inch by three quarter by ten inches long. And what we want to do on one end 
Uh, on the three quarter side is we want to come in an inch and a half and want to mark three eighths at the center here. And we want to mark this on both of our pieces at one end. And that will be to drill a 15 30 seconds inch through hole. And uh, we'll go ahead and do that on both of these arm pieces. So now it's time for assembly. And the last few tiny bits of material that we're going to need are a couple of small pieces of 3 16 of an inch dowel. And one of them will go through the hole that is in our shaft that we drilled earlier. And using the slots that we chiseled out after drilling the holes, the 3 16 inch holes in our cog, this whole assembly just slides up inside just like that. And I'll see if I can show you just like that inside those slots so that this now cannot turn on our axle. Now that we have our axle and our cog placed on here, you want to take one of your arms and sit it on top of your gear and one of your other arms and place it on the bottom, just like that. Now these holes were oversized and that was to allow this to turn freely inside this particular unit. Now at this point in time you just sort of want to play around with this but the next step that you want to do to hold the bottom arm on is you want to slide your handle over top until your hole lines up, the 3 16 hole that you drilled in it, and place a little pin of a 3 16 inch dowel through those holes just to pin it in place so that it can't come uh, apart while you're using it. And I mean you can glue it in place if you like, that's up to you. Um, for now though, I probably will glue this eventually, but for now I'm just going to place it in and let it dry fit until I know that everything lines up properly. The next step in assembly is your two three and a half inch pieces will sandwich your one sixteen, uh, one sixteenth thick piece in between them like that. So that you have this sort of a, a get up and that gets mounted in between your two arms. Now this is where you want to sort of play with it a bit and, and test for fit and setup and what have you. You want the center paddle here in the middle to be able to be hit by your cog but not be in so far that it's going to hit in the center of one of these holes because that would of course deaden the sound. So we're just going to play with it a little bit here for adjustment and then once we get it the way that we like it we're going to go ahead and clamp all of this together and glue it all up just like this. And here we have the unit clamped together waiting to dry. Uh, while we're waiting I'm going to trim these pins down, glue this one in and trim it down and I see that this uh, 7 16 dowel is a little proud of the top of that there so I'm just gonna flush cut that and um, at this point in time other than waiting for this to dry the project is done uh, it requires a good sanding once everything is dried up so uh, once the glue is all dried and uh, everything is sanded and, and hunky-dory I'm gonna come back and see ya and we're gonna take this for a test spin and there you have it, a noisemaker. And uh, we'll just take it for a little spin here. Wow, if that wouldn't drive you absolutely nuts, I don't know what would. But just a point here, uh, do you remember years ago when your kids were young and you had that relative who was single? And they thought it would be a great idea to give your kids, oh, I don't know, a recorder or a drum kit or whatever noisy, annoying electronic toy for Christmas. And now they're married and they've got young ones of their own. You're welcome. 
Guys, I want to thank you for watching again this week. Go ahead and make some of these. Throw them in some stocking stuffers. You know, have some fun with it. Um, I cut off the end here to level it out with my adjustments. This became uneven, and I've given it a good sanding. And even though it's a silly little project to use up some um, scrap stock, it's kind of cool, and it does look pretty good. So give it a try. Make some of these uh, to get back at all the people that bought the noisy, annoying gifts for your kids. And uh, I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.